Hello and welcome back. Uh, my last video I was talking about um, some possible life changes, work, medical, all that. Uh, some of that's figured out. We are staying in Idaho. We feel very good about that decision. Uh, my work, Mountain Archery, uh, was gracious enough to, to let me stay on part time, which will help my mental health, help my um, fatigue and all of that, uh, give me a little more time to, to decompose and, and do some things that I enjoy to help me out. Um, so now I've got to rebuild my Hoyt Venom 33 and my Matthews V3. I stripped them down in, in anticipation that we were moving, so all stripped down, mostly back to stock. So I'm gonna work on getting this one rebuilt today. I've learned some stuff from, from people's comments, so excuse me, thank you for that. Uh, on my ham ski, I'm gonna run it just with the spring because I don't feel like or want to take the time to order the uh, kit that's solid without the spring to run it with the rebound dampener. Somebody mentioned this could cause too much oscillation, so I'm gonna take that off and uh, redo it there. Reinstall side plates, stabilizers, the dampener. It's got quite a few questions on these. I did notice a difference on the Hoyt for vibration and noise with these on there. The Matthews are, are really dead and quiet as is, so I didn't notice a difference. But what I like about these on the Matthews is that they don't fall out. They're screwed together. I lost one on, I can't remember if it was my VXR or my uh, um, Vertix a couple years ago. These can get popped when you're going through the brush fall out. So I like that these don't fall out and that the ends are threaded so you can add weight to either side to customize your your balance and can to the bow so that's cool. Um, I also learned that I steered you guys in the wrong direction with these engaged slim legs. These are not designed for the V3 Vertex VXR Triax, these are designed for the Prima, the Stoke, and the Avail. Although you saw in the videos, I did get these to fit. It was a tight fit, but they did work. So luckily I have my old set of engaged limbs to, to run on there. Um, I'll probably put the Spot Hog on there, but I also have some spare black golds and a Salt 3 pin, which I like a lot. It's a really good solid sight. Uh, and then I have one of their uh, Pro single pins that I might might put on there. We'll just see, see which direction we're going here. Um, really do appreciate all the, the comments and new subscribers. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, for the negative Nancy comment people, you're not offending me. And the reason I reply back to so many of the idiots that say stupid things or try to break me down is because more comments help the algorithms of my videos. So I'm actually trolling you. So appreciate that. All right. Going to get this sucker built, put back together first. Then I'll start working on the uh, Ventum. In other news, I drew a cow elk tag in for Idaho this year. Uh, any weapon, November 1st to the 30th. Um, so I, I won't be doing the archery September elk here in Idaho, which is, which is fine. Idaho did with the part of the state we live in, the southeast corner, Idaho Falls, Rexburg area. They, they did away with uh, mule deer does due to declining population, even during archery season and then during rifle, the youth hunters can't shoot them anymore. So I am debating whether to buy a, a white tail tag or a mule deer tag. White tail hunting around this area is extremely uh, limited due to private property and stuff like that. And then the public areas do get a huge influx. So I am contemplating um, between buying a mule deer tag and trying to find a buck, which I never really care about, or buying a whitetail. Let me know in the comments, what do you think I should chase with my bow this year? 
progress is being made on it. Got the rest back on, dampeners. Um, I figured while I was in confession mode with y'all, the uh, 626 gram eight fletch Twinkie killer. If there was any new archers watching um, that that took this seriously, I was I was not being serious. Uh, all the thumbs down people, they're probably not even watching this to get it, but must have just went right over the top of their heads there. This was just a, a kind of fun thing because so many people get weird trends what that's how trends start is trying different things so i'm not knocking that i'm just knocking how religious people are to one type of following and if you know me i encourage you to watch everything that's out there see what everybody's doing try different things try new things see what works for you so it was it was a fun video of that not to fool you guys to be trying something that crazy but this I should try this with maybe 100 or 125 grain point, see what this does. Honestly, this is gonna be, be too much drag, I feel, and catch too much wind. Um, I appreciate the guys that had fun in the comment section with that one, so, okay. That's it for this, I'll keep going on the V3. Stop procrastinating, leveling out the uh, other fast eddy that I have again machining out of the factory first axis is perfect even though it doesn't have that adjustment second axis on this site was a bit more off than the first one that i did uh, so i got that fixed and then like the other one checking third axis it was spot on there so good to go third or fourth time is charm six times seven times eight times whatever Okay, so my Pierce Platinum 340s, 75 grain Victory Shock TL outserts, which are a unicorn right now, you can't find them. 125 grain point, 60, let's check the scale, see if she's still at 64. Anyways, peeps tied in, sights level, quiver brackets back on, stabilizers, no rebound dampener, just the most beautiful bullet hole through paper. So I'm super happy about that. Hey, hang on. Let's see. Sixty-two point seven. I like that better. Um, I thought it was a compliment, guy, the other day on the uh, eight Fletch Twinkie Killer video said if I, I peppered in the phrase awesome every five seconds, I could uh, have an outstanding Dudley impression. So that was funny, made me laugh. Okay, let's see how this goes. Shoot a bear shaft here, 20, 21.7865. Uh -uh, leave it, come here. Come here. Plug for my Instagram. I'll put a link in the description below. It's just Andrew Colley. And for my work, Mountain Archery. I'll put a, a link down there too. Me and some friends, current employees, former employees, we've been shooting at my house Saturday mornings. Come here. Uh, it's been so much fun. So I've been putting some of that content on Instagram. It was just pouring rain. We've been needing rain here. It's just been such a drought. And oh my gosh, we were just like kids playing in puddles, shooting our bows, doing slow-mo. It was 
it was a good time that kind of stuff's good for your good for your brain your spirits well, let's put an X on some arrows if they're naughty I can't remember why I might have a tweaked insert come here We're going a little left. Group's not bad. Check it out. Okay. That bear shaft's down a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it. It's it's grouping. I'll uh, get this bow sighted in uh, and shoot broadhead. See what they do and adjust as needed. It's a second group after adjusting the sight to the left. Pretty dang good. And it's funny, um, this other bear shaft, you know, it might be knock tuned a little bit different. Height on it's good. Kick in a little bit, knock right. That could be grip pressure, could be a lot of things, but I'm shooting veined shafts with broadheads on them, so that's what matters. Gonna end this with a couple shots at 50. Shot counter says 36 arrows in total today, including this morning. Uh, maybe 40. Click some more. Did shoot a few in the basement there. I'm getting worn out already. Got to work on that stamina. Again, thank you all for, for watching. Uh, please subscribe, leave a comment, and have fun this season. I'll be working on some more videos here soon.